All right, so here we go, the Ego mini bike. All right, so first things first, it took maybe like four days for the Ego mini bike to be delivered. I just had to schedule the freight truck. So yeah, it arrived on a freight truck with a lift gate. I paid for the lift gate service. So the driver was surprised that Ego not only makes power tools, but they also make a mini bike. So we got into a conversation about e-bikes and that was fun. Right away, I knew that the packaging was really good. There was no damage whatsoever. It arrived in a steel cage and you just had to lift the cardboard box over it. The bike was secured with zip ties and nylon strings straps and I did have to disassemble the steel cage to remove the bike but it comes with tools if you don't have tools to do that. I just use my own tools and my power tools to make it faster and once I got it out of the cage the bike was mostly assembled. I only had to install the handlebars and the display and I'm just really impressed that Ego put all that effort into how this thing is delivered. I think people maybe complain about the price tag especially the one that I got with the dual batteries and the dual charger but honestly if you're in the e-bike culture and you're used to how some of these things get delivered sometimes it's hit or miss. I'm just like really pleased that there was nothing about this experience that felt off or that I regretted. So yeah, really, really cool. The Ego mini bike has some decent low end torque, but is limited to a top speed of 28 miles per hour when the speed limiter is turned off. Powered by a massive rear hub motor and dual 7.5 amp hour, 56 volt Ego Arc lithium batteries. This bike is designed for Ego fans who want a quick burst of adrenaline after working outdoors. The three riding modes, Eco, Normal, and Sport, let you tailor your ride depending on your experience level. And it even has a reverse function if you need to back it out of a tight spot. The quick release, dual battery system is a game changer, especially since they're compatible with other Ego power tools. This makes it a fantastic option for those already invested in the Ego ecosystem. This is something that I saw like on the forums a long time ago. I thought it was a joke. I think it was an April Fool's joke, to be honest. It was just a concept bike. There was just a photo. And I don't think anyone realized that they would actually launch this thing. So I decided to see where it was available. And luckily there was one in Ohio. And so I picked it up. It was about 2K with like two batteries and the dual charger. They do make the bike without the batteries for I think a little over 1200 bucks which I think is more appropriate for most people. Right now it has the dual 7.5 amp hour. You can actually put dual 12 amp hour. On first glance, it's small, right? It looks pretty small. It looks like a pit bike or a mini bike, but it does have kind of like a modern um, look to it. I guess inspired by maybe the Honda Navi or the Honda Grom, which is really like sharp, somewhat aggressive lines. Uh, Greenworks has a mini bike, but it's more sort of a traditional type of mini bike, kind of similar to the Coleman. Like most of my Ego products, it's really well designed. I mean, everything about this is premium. It came on a freight truck. It came in a giant like uh, steel case, you know, like a steel stand. They put a lot of effort into making it a really high quality product. Nothing about this bike feels DIY. It feels really well thought out. Obviously, the power source over here is the main feature. I think Ego wants to sell their batteries and have people within their battery power system, ecosystem, and they just built a bike around it. You know, uh, a mini bike for sure. It's an EV mini bike, which is a really niche audience. But I think in terms of just like testing out you know, is this a viable product for people who already own their batteries? I think we're starting to see that maybe it is. It doesn't really solve the problems of like mowing your lawn or cutting down your tree. It doesn't solve any problems really. It's just mainly for fun. For a product that's just recreational, this is the first thing that they launched. Let's just walk through all the features. So we do have 12 inch off-road tires over here. Really, really beefy. You got a moto style brake, moto disc, and mag style rims. And obviously the green over here, the green accent for Ego. Perfect for off-road. Uh, and if you do ride on the street, not a big deal. You'll probably wear down the knobbies a little bit faster. You have a moto style suspension fork over here. Halo style headlight over here. And then you have these three beams. So perfect for riding at night. It's kind of like a silver metallic color, very similar to other Ego products. So we got the riser handlebars over here. Got the rubber grip, very comfortable. Very nice texture. I added a mirror. This is just an aftermarket thing. You have your controls for the lighting. You have your horn. You have a reverse feature, which is really nice. So you could kind of back out because it's so it's a little heavy. You have a reservoir for the moto brakes. Nice and bright center mounted display over here. Basically just gives you all the stats that you need. And then on the right side is your full twist throttle, your dial here for sport mode, uh, normal mode and eco mode. 
and then the beam switch, the light beam switch, and then this is the ready button. So you gotta press this after you uh, turn the bike on, you have to kind of hold down the ready button uh, to make sure that the motor will engage. Uh, as we move down to the center of the bike, you have uh, two dual 56 volt, 7.5 amp hour batteries. Like most Ego products, it's just, plug and play, you know, quick release, super easy. I did a video where I just like put everything in in 10 seconds, you know, so it's really easy to swap batteries. Another cool feature, and I think this is similar to the Honda Navi where it has like this internal storage. So this kind of has a similar thing, except it's in the shape of adding a third battery. So let's say you have kind of max out your range and you just need something to get back home. Uh, you could throw in a third battery. It won't go in sport mode. I think it'll only function in eco and normal, but you know, it's there so you don't get stranded. Uh, really cool. And if you don't want to bring a battery, you could just store other things in here, your phone or whatever. You got your foot pegs. Honestly, I think these could have been a little bit better. The texture just feels like it slips, you know, like it, it, my feet don't really feel like they're planted on this thing, but maybe this can be replaced pretty easily. And uh, you got the nice green Ego suspension spring over here. Again, this doesn't seem like something that's proprietary, so you could change the spring. You could change the shock if you wanted to. Here is the proprietary Ego hub motor. So they don't actually show the specs of this hub motor. Obviously you could take, you know, whatever the power output of 56 volts is, but I don't even think it's doing like, uh, you know, the full peak of what 56 volts could put out. I think it, it is being governed by the controller somehow. So I have a feeling that whatever motor is in here is capable of a lot more. So it remains to be seen if we can mod this thing to just get a little bit more juice out of it. It can top out at 28 miles per hour, but as we know, uh, even 48 volts can go past, you know, 30 miles per hour. So there's, there's power. It's just, you know, we got to figure out how to unlock it. You have this uh, bar over here, um, basically like just to be able to kind of like wrangle the bike around. Uh, there's like four bolts underneath. So I think maybe in the future, Ego might release some sort of like extended rear rack so you can actually carry some stuff. You have the um, tail light and uh, this actually functions as a brake light uh, when you hold down the brakes. You also have the integrated rear fender and then you have a little fender over here above the rear tire. Another thing to note is that to put it in sport mode, you have to actually turn on a switch. You just unscrew the uh, the seat. There's like two bolts, you pop it out, and you hit the switch and it's on sport mode. And that's, I think, a parental feature, uh, like a safety feature if you want your kids to ride on this thing. Uh, one other thing that I did was um, I disabled the, the brake sensors. Right here is the sensor. You can see I have it taped up with some cloth tape. Uh, underneath the cloth tape is a zip tie. And so there's a, there's a sensor that when you hit the brakes, it opens. So when it's open, it engages. And then when it's closed, it disengages. So I just have it uh, closed the whole time, which means that the uh, sensor cutoff never engages. And that's great for, I guess, you know, if you want to stunt the bike, but I do prefer not to cut the motor off uh, while I'm braking. Cause I like sort of like being able to do both, be able to throttle and hold down the brake. I just feel like you have more control when you do that. That's pretty much it. You know, it's, it's kind of like really no frills, but that's really all you need. If you're just looking for an electric mini bike that you're just riding around in on your land, you know, on your farm or just like wherever off road. That's not how I'm going to ride it. I'm going to ride on the streets. I could probably register this as a moped if I wanted to. I just got to throw signals on it. We're in Michigan and getting something stickered as a moped is really easy. You don't need an M1 license. You just need a driver's license and they don't do any inspections. Now let's, uh, let's take the Ego mini bike for its first ride. You can get only up to 20 miles of range on the 7.5 amp hour batteries, but you can definitely extend it with beefier 12 amp hour batteries, and your mileage may vary depending on your weight, terrain, and power level. Equipped with a full suspension system and chunky 12 inch off road tires, the Ego Mini Bike is a very smooth ride. And whether you're navigating off road or cruising down city streets, the dual moto disc brakes ensure you've got reliable stopping power at your fingertips. The Ego draws some inspiration from the Honda Grom in its frame design, which makes it stand out amongst other EV 
mini bikes currently available. The integrated headlight and taillight add a touch of practicality, ensuring you're visible while riding in low light. Okay, so sitting on the bike feels really comfortable. If you guys remember the video with EV Raceworks with the electric KX85, uh, which is, I guess, like a pit bike style, that's pretty much what I feel when I'm sitting on this. Obviously, it's a little bit smaller. Let's uh, take the key, let's turn it on. Now, when you turn it on, like I said, you, you get this ready light that starts blinking and you have to hit the knocker switch here. All right, so right off the line, a really smooth throttle, super silent. You know, you do hear the knobbies on the pavement, but other than that, no chain, right? It's a hub motor and you just get all that power right off the line, really easy to maneuver. Like I said, brake sensor is disabled, so you can kind of like modulate, you know, how you like to brake. Really nice. Really thick tires. So you, you gotta like kind of do, you know, some of this counter steering if you need to. Taking it off road. Yeah, really comfortable. I think just because it's so small, it's so compact, but it's absorbing all the shock. It's really easy to just kind of like whip around, especially if you're like a stunt rider. You could uh, as easily get this thing to uh, wheelie if you wanted to. First impressions, I, I definitely like this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think there was a lot of skepticism, especially from people who come from motorbikes and, you know, even the Suron crowd. It's, it's, um, it's weird because it's a power tool company. What do they know about bikes? Uh, they don't really need to know a lot about bikes because they have the money to pay people who can build the bikes around their power source. And so I think what they did here, uh, to me, uh, as someone who's like a EV enthusiast, I've never quite ridden something specifically like this. It doesn't feel like a Saran. It doesn't feel like any high-powered e-bike per se, or even a high-powered scooter. It just has a little bit more heft to it. Um, and the best part is it uses the same batteries that I use for my lawnmower, that I use for my snow shovel, that I use for my leaf blower. And if you're already in the Ego ecosystem, like getting this uh, I think would be a nice step into the EV culture if you don't already have an e-bike and you just want to kind of get a taste of what, you know, something that's just feels a little more substantial than a traditional e-bike would feel without getting a Saran. This is like a perfect kind of gateway product uh, to do that. I'm pretty psyched about this. Uh, there's a lot of like modability to this, I think. Uh, I think people are gonna really customize this a lot. All right, so I've seen lots of videos of the Ego mini bike on the internet. I've seen a couple of people wheeling them, and now I finally got my hands on one. I'm gonna give it a try. I'm a little skeptical, but we'll see. All right, let's put it right in sport mode, and let's just, let's just kick right into it with two feet down, and... Oh yeah, definitely. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, this is sweet. See if we can do some seat stander action. This thing is just too much fun, man. I absolutely love it. It just feels like a really, really, really big toy. I feel like a child again on this thing. <laughs> this thing is super, super, super smooth on the throttle. When you give it throttle, it is very predictable and very smooth. There's no jump. I believe it's the Hall sensorless motors that jump like that. When you give it throttle, they just like kind of give you, there's no low percentage of throttle. It feels really smooth, really nice. The brakes feel nice. I could maybe go for a little bit more rear brake, but most bikes, when you buy them out the box, they don't have enough brakes anyways. Um, it's not as heavy as I thought. It's still got some uh, some weight to it, some, some chunk. So in comparison to per se, like a 212 Predator, like Coleman mini bike, it's 
probably about the same weight. Um, definitely a little bit less power than some of those 212s are built out to be. I don't know, those things are absolute monsters. It definitely doesn't go as fast. <laughs> it's like not even half the speed of those, but it makes up for it in other ways. If I could have a little bit more power and a little bit more top speed, say maybe 30 mile an hour, this thing would be absolutely awesome. Like a, like a true like class three, almost e-bike. You know, this thing is pretty sweet. I actually like the looks of it a lot. It's comfortable, it's pretty small. It's kind of got gr mini Grom vibes. Um, it's very tight and compact though compared to a Grom. But between your legs, it's sort of similar. Okay, so the tires, definitely you can feel that tread. Pretty aggressive tread on here. Definitely more off-road oriented, you know, for when you get done with weed eating your front lawn. You gotta go take this around back and do a few laps in the dirt track. <laughs> it is a good time. I mean, it's just so small and nimble, tiny little tires you can turn on a dime. The throttle is actually quite intuitive and comfortable. It is in sport mode right now. I guess I'll try normal. Honestly, it feels pretty similar to sport. We'll try eco. I'd put a young adult on this thing and I don't think that they'd kill themselves. It's fun, you know, for goodness sake, we're running on lawnmower batteries, weed eater batteries. They should make like a rack to put your leaf blower and your weed eater and like take this out to the job site. All in all, I think this thing is cool. You know, there's always a question, what can it really do under the best of circumstances? There might be a battery upgrade in the future. There might be a motor controller upgrade. Kind of see what this motor motor really is capable of. I don't know the specs on it, but I'm sure we could get some more juice out of it. But I think it's a good base platform. So here's what we like. Battery compatibility with Ego Power Tools enhances accessibility and convenience. The frame's modern, aggressive design will definitely turn heads, and its well-engineered suspension and tire setup make for an exceptionally comfortable ride. However, the biggest draw for EV enthusiasts is that it has a lot of potential to be modded. As far as we can tell, the components on the Ego Mini Bike can easily be swapped with more powerful ones that are available to experienced EV modders. But here's some things to consider. It's not street legal, which can limit where you can ride, depending on how strict your local laws are. Despite having decent power, the bike's potential feels restrained by its controller, especially when it comes to top speed. And the bike's size may not suit taller or larger riders, potentially making for a cramped experience. Overall, the Ego Mini Bike is a bold step into the electric bike market, offering power tool enthusiasts a thrilling new way to engage with the brand. While its compact size and battery system score big points for convenience and style, the limitations in legality and power might narrow its appeal. So what's your take on the Ego Mini Bike? Is it the EV mini bike you've been waiting for, or does it miss the mark for your riding needs? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and we'll see you guys in the next video.